Glory to the Lord God Almighty, the maker and the possessor of heaven and earth. I am David Agbona, and this is David Agbona Ministries. We are having a communion and anointing service. In this service, we are going to pray briefly. Thereafter, we will hear the word of God. Then we will break bread as brethren. That is the Holy Communion. Wherever you are, you are not alone. Jesus said, wherever two or more are gathered in his name, he will be there. We are gathered together spiritually. We may not be gathered physically. So even if you are physically alone, you are not spiritually alone. We are together and we are having church. Jesus is with us. This is a church service. The power of God is not restricted by geography. And after taking the communion, I would pray on our anointing oil, yours and mine, and then the service will close. So let's begin with thanksgiving unto the Lord. The Bible says we enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. So let us enter in with thanksgiving. Thank him for what he has done in your life. Thank him for his goodness towards you. Father, we are grateful. We praise you, Lord. You are holy. Yeah, you are almighty. Great are you, Lord, greatly to be praised. We thank you for your protection, for our going out and our coming in. Thank you for keeping us safe. Thank you for frustrating the counsel of the enemy concerning us. Thank you, Lord, that you are with us. You are keeping us safe. You, are not, uh, you don't allow the enemy to destroy us. We give you thanks in the mighty name of Jesus. For this week, we thank you. Goodness and mercy shall follow us because we follow Jesus Christ. We thank you, Heavenly Father. Your word is true. Thank you for this service. Thank you for the people joining in from various nations. Thank you, Lord God, that you are good. Thank you. You are good and your mercy is forever. We praise you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Now I want you to Thank God for specific things in your life. Giving thanks for specific events and things happening in your life. Thank Him for answering the prayers you have prayed before. Because by faith, you receive the answers. So give Him thanks right now. Thank Him. You are glorious, O Lord. We praise you. We praise you, Father. Thank you for David Eichmann Ministries and what you are using this ministry to do. For fulfilling your purposes through this ministry, we give you thanks. For souls being saved, thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. I want you now to, first of all, forgive everyone who has offended you. Whatsoever they have done, just forgive. Jesus said that if we do not forgive, God will not forgive us. And that if we forgive, our Heavenly Father will forgive us. And we know that we have offended God more than anyone has offended us. So it is imperative that we forgive. Nobody is what are going to hell for. So I want you right now to forgive. Every offense, whatsoever has been said, done, just let it go right now. And ask the Lord to cleanse you of all bitterness. Ask him to heal your wounds, to heal your heart, and to cleanse you of all bitterness. Pray right now. Ask the Lord to cleanse you of all bitterness. You do not forgive because someone apologizes. You forgive whether or not the offender apologizes. Forgiveness does not mean you draw the person close to you. It just means you let go of, of the issue and leave it in the hands of God. That's forgiveness. That is forgiveness. Now, confess your sins. Ask the Lord to forgive you. Lord, have mercy on us. Forgive our thoughts, words, and actions. Forgive our transgressions, O Lord. 
Forgive our iniquities. Lord, have mercy on us. Cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Preserve us blameless. Preserve our whole spirits, souls, and bodies blameless unto the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Father, I pray in this service, every veil of covering upon the hearts and minds of the people will be torn away. That the light of your word will shine into our hearts and minds. That you will teach us, O oh Lord God, you will draw us close to you and glorify your name in this service. We give you thanks, we give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Lord, stretch forth your hand, please. Confirm your word, save, heal, and deliver. And cause that by my hands, signs and wonders will be done in the name of your Holy Son, Jesus Christ. And that, Lord, breakthroughs and deliver and favor you will give to everyone participating in this service. Let everyone that comes in contact with this service have an encounter with you. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. And in the mighty name of Jesus, I destroy every power that will rise against this service. I frustrate every counsel against this service. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So today, I'm going to be ministering and be teaching as anointed by the Lord on the topic, the religious spirit. There is a spirit that tries to mimic the presence of God. There is a spirit that tries to present people as though they are walking with God, yet not um, walking with God. The presence of God transforms. The presence of God in a person's life will transform that person. The presence of God in a person's life will change that person. The presence of God will reveal things about you, to you and to others. When you are in the presence of God, you will discover your iniquity. You will discover your errors. And that is why as you spend time in prayer and in study of the word, as you obey the commandments of God, you realize more and more areas in your life that need to be brought under the authority of the blood of Jesus. You will discover your errors more. That is the reason why when Isaiah was in the presence of God, Isaiah chapter 4 or 6, I believe, in the year Isaiah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. When he saw the Lord, he exclaimed, Ah, I'm a man of unclean lips, dwelling with, in the midst of a people of unclean lips. He saw the Lord and he realized his spiritual state. God did not point at Isaiah and say, Hey, you are dirty. Hey, you have unclean lips. Isaiah saw himself in the light of God. If you are in a church and you are comfortable in sin and you do not discover things that are wrong with you, it is either you are in a false church or a church without fire or you have shot yourself to the light of God. If you are in, if you are a part of a ministry or under a ministry and you do not discover areas in your life that need to be worked on, there's a problem somewhere. 
because the presence of God will reveal the hidden things of a person. It will show you who you are. Now, the religious spirit tries to mimic the presence of God without the transforming power of God. So the religious spirit will get a person to seek God on his own terms, not on God's terms. We seek God on God's terms, not on our terms. We do not seek God how it, com it is convenient for us. We seek God how it has been determined by God for us. We seek God according to his protocol, not according to our protocol. We do not worship God in the manner of the hidden. We do not offer sacrifices that are not sanctioned by God. The two sons of Aaron the priest tried that and God burned them up. They offered sacrifices in a manner that they were not supposed to and the fire of God burnt them to ashes. Today, God doesn't do that all the time, which he wasn't doing all the time in the Old Testament. But many people confuse that as God has changed. He hasn't changed. There are things that take place spiritually. And that is the reason why some people lose their ministry. Because they were offering strange fire. We must be careful not to trivialize the protocols of heaven. God expects you to come into his presence decently dressed. He expects you to go to church decently dressed, not sexy dressed. If you can't ask yourself why your clothes have to reveal things they don't need to reveal or draw attention to parts of your body that don't have anything to do at that time in worship, you sh then there is a problem with you. If you can't ask yourself that question, I'm speaking to men, I'm speaking to women. For churches today, are flooded and are beginning, we are seeing a flood of women that are dressed indecently, revealing cleavage, wearing tight fitted clothes, wearing skirts that have the arrow in front. Someone needs to tell you the truth. There are clothes designed in the marine kingdom. You have skirts that are open at the front and long at the back covering to draw attention to that which is between your legs. Women, if you dress that way, fire may not fall down. But on the day of judgment, you will discover that you are counted as a transgressor. And when you are dressing indecently, you can go to the church and clap your hands and hail and praise God. But the anointing that should come upon you will not be there. Why? Because you have made yourself a vehicle of seducing and unclean spirits. Same thing with men who are dressing on spandex and going around trying to reveal their chest in churches and other nonsense. You make yourself a vehicle for demons. The Bible says there are people that are ever learning and never coming to the knowledge of truth. The reason is what they have exposed themselves to, what they have yielded themselves as vehicles for. If seducing spirits and spirits of lust see you as a landing and takeoff pad, you're like an airport for them to attack other people. 
you will be telling yourself you are a believer, but you may be amazed that your name is not in the book of life. Or if your name is in the book of life, when you are weighed before God, you know, the Bible says that all of us will give account of everything about us, every word we speak and our actions. When you are weighed before God, you will realize that you have built a, mas a mansion with hay, with dry grass. The Bible says that each person is building some with gold, some with silver, some with uh, wood, some with hay, some with stubble. Stubble is even a drier and thinner form of grass. And then every man's work will be tested with fire. Imagine building a very big mansion, but with dry grass and then the fire of God burns it down and you see that you have wasted a lot of time. Why? Because you were laboring in the house of God yet carrying seducing spirits. And that is why the Bible says we should not judge anything before the time because that day will reveal the hidden motives. You can be a pastor and what you are doing is just drawing attention to yourself. There are many pastors that are just there presenting themselves as superstars, as celebrities. You can operate in the gifts of the Spirit without the presence of the Holy Spirit. It may sound shocking. But the Bible says the gifts and callings of God are irrevocable. God will give you a gift. He will not take it back. Lucifer fell from heaven, but God did not take the power he had. He didn't take it back. So Lucifer still had power, still has power. Yet he's an enemy of God. He's called Satan as adversary, accuser. Yet he still has power. Jesus said all the power of the enemy, meaning the enemy has power. So if God didn't strip Lucifer of power, don't think that he, he will strip you of power when you are walking in sin. You can be walking in sin and, be, and, and still be demonstrating power. The Bible says in um, 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 10, that Saul was in the house and the evil spirit was upon him and he prophesied. Saul was prophesying a gift, yet he was possessed by an evil spirit. Remember that one of the signs that he was anointed by God, according to Samuel, was that he would come in contact with some people and he would prophesy. And another time he was going to kill David. David was with Samuel and definitely would have tried to kill Samuel. On his way there, the Spirit of God took control and he started prophesying. So we see that there was a gift of prophecy that he had, but Saul was possessed by an evil spirit. The spirit of religion will make you comfortable in your sin, yet giving you the impression that you are right with God because you are carrying out religious rites and practices. The spirit of religion will tell you that you can worship God even with iniquity in your heart and your, in your hands. I have heard pastors preach that we can do whatever we like. It doesn't matter before God. And their proof is that they speak in tongues and miracles are happening and the people say we are satisfied that we see miracles and we are able to speak tongues and so we can do whatever we like. And there are big ministries that are rooted in iniquity. They teach the people to fear God, yet serve their idols. They teach the people that as long as you are paying tithe, in fact, tithe is even more, is more important to many churches than even the word of God, the presence of God. Pastors will talk more about tithe. Many pastors talk more about tithe than about holiness, than about righteousness. Every Sunday you hear, bring your tithe or God will scatter your business. Which, by the way, is false. 
but not every Sunday you hear, live right and fear God. It gives you an impression that when you pay tithe, that's it all. Tithe is good, but it is not forced on you in the New Testament. It is an option. You can give more, you can give less. God will not destroy your business. When the issue of money became the number one uh, focus in churches, the presence of God left many churches and many churches have watered down. Because when you take your eyes off the person of Jesus and focus on what you can get from Jesus, you will cease to be transformed. The Bible says we beholding him. We are transformed to his image from glory to glory. This happens when we behold him. The transformation comes when we behold him. When we behold what we can get from him, we will not be transformed. Yet, because of his power, we will benefit from him. And if you are someone that has eternity in your heart, you will focus on Jesus Christ. The spirit of religion will tell you, you can fear God, yet serve your idols. Let's look at 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 23 to 33. This is what happened after the northern kingdom, the northern ten tribes of Israel were sent away from their land by the Assyrians. The Assyrians then placed other people there. Let's read and see what happened. I'll read 2 Kings chapter 17 from verse 23 to 33. Until the Lord had removed Israel out of his sight, as he had said by all his servants the prophets, so was Israel carried away out of their own land to Assyria unto this day. And the king of Assyria brought men from Babylon and from Kufa and from Ava and from Hamat and from Seth Avain and placed them in the cities of Samaria instead of the children of Israel. And they, were, and they possessed Samaria and dwelt in the cities thereof. And so it was at the beginning of their dwelling there that they feared not the Lord. Therefore the Lord sent lions among them which slew some of them. Wherefore, they spoke to the king of Assyria, saying, The nations which you have removed and placed in the cities of Samaria know not the manner of the God of the land. Therefore, he has sent lions among them, and behold, they slay them, because they know not the manner of the God of the land. Then the king of Assyria commanded, saying, Carry Hida, or Thida, one of the priests from whom you brought from there, and let them go and dwell there, and let him teach them the manner of the God of the land. Then one of the priests whom they had carried away from Samaria came and dwelt in Bethel, and taught them how they should fear the Lord. Howbeit every nation, now take note, howbeit every nation made gods of their own and put them in the houses of the high places which the Samaritans had made, every nation in their cities wherein they dwelt. And the men of Babylon made Sukkot Benoth, and the men of Kut made Megal, and the men of Hamath made Ashima, and the Avites made Nivaz and Tartak, and the Sephavites burnt their children in fire to Adramelech and Anamelech, the gods of Sephavim. So they feared the Lord and made unto themselves of the lowest of them priests of the high places, which sacrificed for them in the houses of the high places. They feared the Lord and served their own gods after the manner of the nations whom they carried away from them. They feared the Lord and yet 
they were <laughs> making unto themselves their own gods. They feared the Lord and served their gods. How is that possible? They feared the Lord and served their gods. They did what would avoid the manifest wrath of God, yet their heart was not with God. Their heart was with their idols. They carried out practice, religious practices to avert the immediate wrath of God, yet they worshipped their gods. So what was it they were doing that accounted as fearing God? We don't have all the details, but we have an idea. They would have offered sacrifices periodically. There were certain things they would have avoided doing. Concerning the land, there were times God said the land should be left to rest. They would have left the land to rest, not farming each and every year. Probably farm for six years, leave the seventh year for the land to rest. They would have offered sacrifices at the new moons. They would have offered, and they would have done other things like giving certain offerings. But they continued serving their gods. To serve means to be in a relationship of representing something and carrying out the desires of someone. So they were carrying out the desires of their gods. The Bible says some of them were even burning their children with fire, with fire as offering to their gods. They were carrying out the desires of their gods, yet carrying out religious rites to prevent God's immediate wrath and manifestation of wrath. God's, the immediate manifestation of God's wrath. It's amazing. But it, is, it was happening, and it still happens today. These people were religious, but were not spiritual. They were religious, but were not walking with the Holy Spirit. That's what I meant by spiritual. Because all these things are spiritual in a sense. But they were not walking with the Holy Spirit. They were not serving God. They were just fearing Him. Okay, let's avoid this. That is how many people are in church. They don't love God, but they are looking for what to do for God. So that God will be merciful to their iniquities. Now, God can be merciful to you by not striking you dead in this world. But what happens if you leave this world? If you are not of God, you are not of God. So it may give you a um, reprieve, a temporary reprieve but it is not solving the problem. These people had a reprieve. God was not sending lions to punish them for their actions, but they were not God's people. And so as they were dying, they were going to hell. There is a difference between being religious and walking in the spirit. Jesus Christ is the one who transforms us if you focus on his person, if you commit yourself to him. He will transform you to be like him. But if you decide to walk in the spirit of religion, you will deceive yourself, but you can't deceive God and you can't deceive everybody. You can deceive some but not everybody. The spirit of religion makes you comfortable as a pastor that you are preaching, that people are being blessed, and yet you are walking in sin. It makes you comfortable. 
And we are seeing pastors being exposed for rape, being exposed for adultery, being exposed for pedophilia, being exposed for occult practices and membership of various fraternities. We are seeing pastors being exposed for homosexuality. How is it that these people will climb the pulpit and preach against homosexuality while their homosexual partner is just sitting there watching them? And then after the service, they go carry out homosexual acts. It is the spirit of religion. God did not call us to be religious. He called us to be like him. That is what God called us to do. To be like him. The spirit of religion will deceive people to hell. Make them feel right with God. Whereas they are not right with God. The spirit of religion will close your eyes to the fact that you do not look like Jesus in character. But yet you are using his name. Yet you are called his own by men. The spirit of religion will make you look at your gifts, not your fruit. Because by your fruit, you will be identified. It is the fruit of the spirit in your life that matters to God. The gifts are given to you to trade with, to get fruit. So God won't take those gifts, but the spirit of But it is by your fruit that you will be rewarded. It is by your fruit that you will be identified as being of God. Let us look at the book of Mark. Mark. Or let's say Matthew first. Matthew chapter 7. Then we'll go to Mark chapter 7. Let's look at Matthew. Chapter 7, verse 16. Matthew chapter 7, verse 16. The Bible says, You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Verse 17, even so every good tree brings forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree brings forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil tree and fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that brings not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. Let's look at verse 21. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father which is in heaven, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, and in your name have cast out devils, and in your name done many wonderful works? Then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that walk iniquity. So you can see here that. <laughs> On that day, there are people that will be surprised because they actually functioned in ministry. They functioned as believers, but didn't live as believers. And so they will say, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not cast out devils? Imagine the devils were cast out, even though these people were not living right. Why? Because of the name of Jesus. God honors his name. God honors his name. And so people can use the name of Jesus to do things, yet they are not right with him. But when you will encounter God, either he, Jesus comes or you go meet Jesus, you are going to see it's a different ballgame. That is why the Bible says we should be conscious of how we live so that when we meet him, we, sh we shall be like him. And he will not say to us, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. So it is not everybody saying, Lord, Lord. Not everybody that says, I am born again. Not everybody that speaks in tongues. Some of which tongues are not even real tongues. 
Not everyone that speaks in tongues. Not everyone that prophesies. Not everyone that casts out devils. Not everyone that does mighty works. Not ordinary works. Even mighty works is of God. Because you can carry out things in the name of Jesus and still not be a believer. You can know the Bible without knowing the God of the Bible. You can be able to preach from the Bible without having the Spirit of God speaking through you. You can actually operate to a level without the presence of God in your life. Now, Jesus said on that day, he said, depart from me. Depart from me. You workers of iniquity. Workers of iniquity tells you the disqualifying criteria. What disqualified these people is they were workers of iniquity. So if you are a worker of iniquity, you can be operating a religious life, but Jesus Christ does not know you. Doesn't mean he doesn't know your existence, just that he has no relationship with you. And so if you are a Christian, and you are living a sinful life and telling yourself that since your pastor sees nothing wrong with it, since your pastor endorses it, you can go on. Since God has not taken the gifts he gave you back, since God has not struck you with lightning, you can continue walk fearing God yet serving other gods. On the day, on that day, it's my prayer that you repent before that day so you don't hear depart from me. So the religious spirit will make you comfortable the way you are, giving yourself false hope. You want to know the character of God? Go to Galatians chapter 5. Read the fruit of the Spirit. Read the fruit of the flesh in Galatians chapter 5. It is compared, the fruit of the flesh and the fruit of the Spirit. Take note, it's fruit. So it will come by your relationship. A fruit comes out from the branch's relationship with the tree stem. So the fruit of the Spirit will come if you are walking with the Spirit of God. The fruit of the flesh will come if you are walking in the flesh. So what you are connected to is what comes out as your fruit. Your fruit is the product of your connection to whosoever you are connected to. If you are connected to the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit. If you are connected to the flesh, the fruit of the flesh, which is the character. So if you go to Galatians chapter 5, you'll see it there you see the character. I'm going to read, let me read Galatians chapter 5 and then we'll come back to Mark. For the sake of those not with their Bibles. And I know this video is going to be played at a time when Bibles are scarce and even outlawed in certain parts of the world. Galatians chapter 5 verse um, let's read from verse 16 to the end. This I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lost against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. The works mean fruit. Adultery fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do these things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, 
faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. So you can see the difference. Now we'll go to Mark chapter 7, verse 6 and 7. I'll close with this verse. He answered, that is Jesus, he answered and said unto them, Well hath Isaiah, that is Isaiah, prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, These people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. I want you to pray right now. Examine yourself. Have you been living a religious life? Or have you been living a, a life, a Christian life? I want you to examine yourself. Talk to the Lord right now. There are those of you who are hearing me, you are not born again. You are not Christians. Christians by relationship, not Christians by filling a form and saying religion, Christian. I want you to pray with me at this time. The rest of you, examine yourselves and talk to God. Those of you who want to give your life to Jesus Christ, who want Jesus to be your Lord and Master from now on, I want you to pray. Say, Father, just use, you can repeat after me or use your own words. Father, I thank you. I repent of my sins. I receive your salvation in Jesus Christ, your son. And I ask that you cleanse me with the blood of Jesus and fill me with your Holy Spirit. I confess and accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Fill me and baptize me with your Holy Spirit and preserve me holy till the day I meet you. Thank you, my Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You pray that prayer, you are born again. Now I want to pray for everyone. Father, I thank you for your word that has come forth. Thank you for the entrance of your word gives light and life. Lord, may your word abide in our hearts and may we bring forth fruit to your glory. Father, we pray that you will help us to walk in the spirit and not in religion. Help us to walk in the spirit and not in religion. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And I pray for everyone who has uh, accepted Jesus as Lord and Master. I pray, Lord, that you will keep them and preserve them and protect them. Guide them, Lord. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you pray the prayer with me, you're born again. I encourage you to be also baptized with water that is being dipped into water and brought out as a proclamation that you died with Christ on the cross and you were resurrected with him. It is important and any Christian who has been baptized with water can baptize. This is not the sprinkling that the Catholics do. That's not baptism. That's not even scriptural. You don't sprinkle on a child and say the child is baptized. It's dipping in water and being brought out. And the Bible does not say there's an age limit or age bracket. So baptize even children. Baptize them. If a child can sin, a child can repent. And so um, if you also want to reach out to me, you can. This ministry has a WhatsApp and Telegram number. I'm going to call the number, so listen carefully. Get your pen to write it down. Oh, 
Sorry about that. I have to turn off my camera temporarily. Just a moment. Just a moment, I'll be with you. I apologize for that. So now, I don't know if you can see me clearly. I told the same. So now, the number is plus two, three, four, seven, zero, three, 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 four, three, six, eight. I'll call it again plus two, three, four. Seven zero three 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 four three six eight, and then you can reach me by email David Igbona Ministries at gmail.com. Igbona is spelled A I G B O N A. If you are watching this video, you will see it at the bottom. My name is written there. But if you are listening to the podcast, with you, that spelling would help. Igbona, that is David Igbona Ministries at gmail.com. I also encourage you to subscribe to our online platforms. We are on um, BitChute with the channel name David Igbona. You'll find this channel on various social media platforms, BitChute, ODC.com, Rumble, iConnectFX, Gab.com, uh, Locals.com, Brighton. You also find me on YouTube. On YouTube, you can uh, select from our playlist and be blessed by the playlist videos is easy for you to trace the communion and anointing service, the prayer, healing, and deliverance, and others. But YouTube heavily censors this ministry. And so we uh, encourage you to subscribe to our channel on other platforms. Those platforms I mentioned earlier, the alternative platforms, Bitchute, Brighton, Gab.com, Rumble, ODC.com, and others. The channel name is David Agbona. So let's get our communion. I apologize for any disruptions in the video. This ministry is growing. I want you to take your communion. When we take the communion, we proclaim the Lord's death till he returns. We proclaim his death till he returns. Jesus said, as often as we do it, we should do it in remembrance of him. As often as we do it, we should do it in remembrance of him. And so you take the bread and you take the drink. Communion is also important for spiritual warfare because it invokes the power of the covenant. It invites the power of the covenant into your situation. To take your bread, bake without yeast, either as a wafer or as a loaf like this. Father, we thank you for every bread and drink lifted unto you. We ask, Lord, that this bread becomes the body of Jesus in us and the drink becomes the blood of Jesus in us. We pray, Lord, that everything good that you have placed in us would be revived if weak and strengthened, O oh Lord. We pray anything in us that is not of you will die now in the name of Jesus. We pray that as we take this communion, that which is missing in our lives, we receive it. We receive it from the body of Jesus. And we invoke the power of the covenant that we've made it to you. Lord, act for us 
intervene in our situations, in our health, our finances, our academics, our career ministries, and everything that pertains to us. Lord, be involved. Lord, we submit ourselves to you. As we take the communion, we yield our whole spirit, soul, and body to you. We thank you for healings, deliverances, and breakthroughs in Jesus' name. Amen. And then you break it, you break the bread. Communion is very important. Jesus said we should do it often. Then you take your oil. By reason of the anointing, the yoke is broken. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27. James chapter 5. If anyone is sick, let him be anointed with oil by the elders, and he will recover. The Bible also says the disciples went around anointing with oil the sick, and the sick were healed. Touch not my anointed, do my prophets no harm. So I want to go at 5, verse 15. Father, I thank you for every oil lifted to you, my oil, my brother's oil, my sister's oil. I pray, Lord, that this oil will sanctify and make it holy. I pray, Heavenly Father, that breakthroughs, healings, and deliverances will take place through this oil. I pray your power will work through this oil. Yet everyone anointed and anything anointed will be consecrated unto you. Lord, let favor, protection, healing, deliverance be to all who are anointed and what is theirs also. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you for participating in this service. Please do uh, give this video a thumbs up and you can leave a comment. The reason is not to flatter me, but because the uh, social media platforms, they, are, they work with artificial intelligence, they work with algorithms that will make you see more of my videos and make more people see these videos because you'll be telling people that this video is good to watch. So your thumbs up is simply to tell the operating system of the social media platform that this video is good to watch. May Yahweh bless you and keep you. May Yahweh cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May Yahweh lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And to those of you who have been giving offerings to God through this ministry, I want you to know that the Lord knows you and he will bless you. Thank you for what you are doing. God bless you and see you again.